This tutorial looks at creating an idea and coming up with an idea for a digital marketing campaign and putting together strong and effective aims and objectives um, that will help us to achieve our goals of um, the digital marketing campaign. So before we begin, I just want to outline that there's six tips that I want to mention before we begin. All of these are to try and whet your appetite when it comes to digital marketing, when it comes to digital channels. What should you go for? What should you think of? What way do your audience think and so on? So the first one is think visual. In the last number of years, um, we've all seen that even on channels such as Facebook, um, that the level of engagement with visual media, with visual uh, content, far outweighs the uh, engagement with textual content. So with regards to visual, our brain works in a very different way. Try to uh, optimize your visual um, content and your visual output. Keep in mind that it's all about design. It's all about your visuals. It's all about trying to get your message across in, in as quick a way as possible. So first one is think visual. Second one is think mobile. There's no doubt but mobile technology is outstripping uh, desktop technology when it comes to searches, etc. Um, all the apps we're dealing with nowadays are, are um, mobile orientated. Um, some of them are only geared towards mobile. So when, I'm, when we're talking about creating content, think about creating it and optimizing it both for desktop and for mobile. Try and figure out where your audience are and understand what they use most often and optimize that. So that's the second one, think mobile. Third one is think optimize. Now the word optimize here, we can use it in many, many different ways. So when we think about search engine optimization, it's all about trying to optimize your position on the search engine. So in other words, so that you'll be found with certain searches, etc. cetera. Um, we're also trying to optimize our engagement. So understanding our audience, understanding what they're interested in, understanding the time of day that they're, they're on our channels and what they're using and what they're looking for is really, really important. And all, always uh, when we're trying to optimize something, we're always thinking about file size as well and trying to deliver it in the best possible uh, way. So that's the third one. Fourth one, think commitment. Um, a digital marketing campaign is, is a long-term thing. We have different... Um, content being offered at different times, but it's not something that we we do once and forget about and, and, and leave dormant because if we're not committed to the channel, well, then our customers won't be committed to us. So it's all about trying to build on what we have and understanding um, what's happening and building on that, which brings us on to the fifth one is think measurement. Uh, the web is an imminently measurable uh, domain. Um, the best thing about it is that everything can be measured. The worst thing about it is, is everything can be measured. When you think about that, it's not about measuring everything. It's about measuring what's important for you, measuring what's important for your business, knowing what your aims are and measuring what's important to see how well you're achieving those aims on a, a short term, a medium term and a long term basis. So, you know, the old analogy that you can't manage what you do not measure is really, really important here. But it's about understanding what you should be measuring, how often you should be measuring, and more importantly, acting upon what you're doing. It's not only about measuring something, but it's also about moving forward and understanding what's next. And the sixth one is, what is it? Think what? Any ideas? looking at it. The sixth one is simply think. Remember the first two parts of this are, well, the first three parts are coming up with your idea, analyzing where you're at, analyzing who it's for, and then creating a strategy. That's all about thinking. The more thought you put into it at that point in time, the better you will stand going forward. And the more robust your strategy will be, and hopefully the more robust your implementation will be. So thinking um, you really can't overthink things here. It's about thinking as much as you possibly can. Okay. So we've already introduced this in looking at the whole idea of 
these are the four stages involved in the digital marketing process. So once you've come up with your idea, the next stage is analyzing that idea. And we talked about the three stages involved in analysis. And we'll, we'll look at the first one here in this particular tutorial, which is looking at your aims and objectives. OK, but once you've analyzed it, figured out where you're going, generally, the next thing is you, you look at strategy. That's your plan. How are you going to do it? Then you look at implementation and you look at measurement. And as we've seen in the introduction to this course, this is an iterative process that goes round and around as well. But before we even get into analysis, we have to come up with our idea. And our idea is what do we want to conduct a digital marketing campaign on? OK, so this is this is the first part of your assignment as well. So you've got to figure out what you want to actually carry out a a digital marketing campaign for so you've got to start thinking about what your idea is and you know when you're looking at your idea it's very very important that you you think this through completely and you know it's not just oh i have an idea that i want to do a digital marketing campaign for you know a restaurant down the road or for uh, the area of null at the end of the day it's you've got to think more than just that you've got to think about what your idea is about, what you want to achieve from your idea, give a little bit of background about your idea and so on. So there's three things to do with the idea. The first one we're going to have a look at right now, and that is the rationale. Why do you do it? Why are you going to do this? And why now? Why not last year? Why not next year? Why is it so important to do this? The rationale. So if you don't have a rationale, you know, if there isn't a why, you know, really, why are you doing it in the first place? So that's really important. OK, the second one is the background of your company or your concept. OK, and that's really important as well. So if it's a restaurant, we need to know where it's located, what kind of cuisine it has, its opening hours, its background, its ownership, uh, its, its number of covers, as much information about it as possible. OK. Um, whether it's got a takeaway menu, not, whatever the case might be, okay? So all of these things are important. So the background is really, really important with regards to your idea. Um, your rationale, why? Why are, you, why are you creating a digital marketing campaign and why now? And the rationale should not be because Paddy Horn told us we need a, 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 to conduct a digital marketing campaign on something. It's why this? Why are you picking this particular concept? Why are you doing it? Why now? OK. The last one is the purpose. And this leads into the next uh, next phase that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. But the purpose is what are you trying to achieve? In other words, what's your end goal? OK. In other words, what's your aim? All right. So this is very, very important as well. So the idea is not just I want to create a digital marketing campaign for a restaurant or a hotel or a and b or an area or a walking tour or whatever. OK, it's what do you want to get from that? All right. It's not uh, the purpose is not creating the digital marketing campaign. The purpose is, oh, I want to increase my numbers or I want to sell something or I want to promote something or I want to do something like that. OK, um, and you've got to be as, as rigid and as, as smart about that as possible. OK, so these are the three areas that we need to look at on your idea. What it is you're doing and the background information about that why you're doing it and um, and and why now. OK, so the purpose, the background and rationale, really, really important. What we're going to do at every stage um, in the analysis and strategy phase is we're going to look at a previous example. Now, I'm not going to read word for word on uh, what's on this example, but we're going to follow the one example all the way through the actual um, the actual analysis and planning stage. OK, and the, the example we're going to look at is, is a company here called Ground Control. OK, and Ground Control are a, a bespoke um, travel company. And what they do is they organize tours, guided tours around Ireland um, for people coming to Ireland and um, also people who are residing within Ireland as well. OK, but um, it's very important to have a look. So what they're actually doing is, is they're creating everything from, you know, if you arrive at the airport, everything from arrival there, pickups, they organize all your transport, all your itinerary, your, 
your accommodation, your bag drops, all of these things, you know, and you might be saying, I have a group of six people arriving in the airport on whatever date and I'm leaving on whatever date and we want to go to the west of Ireland. They will organize all of that itinerary and and your tour guide, etc. So that's what they do. All right. Um, and what they're, what's important about this is I'm not going to, as I say, I'm not going to read each one, each part of their idea and their planning and so on. The good thing is that this, along with four other examples, are all available on the website and on Dropbox. So if you want to, and I encourage you to do so, you should actually download those and read them because what they are is very good examples of previous assignments. And it's a bit like your thesis in the library. Um, you can access it and see what's going on um, and get a really good gist of what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. Now, not all of the um, assignments are 100 percent. In fact, none of them are, but they're all um, 70s and above. OK, so they're all very, very good assignments. And you'll if you read all of them, you will actually see or even if you, you scan over all of them, you will see that they're some of them are quite different in how they approach things. But you will all see that that they all cover the same points throughout the, the document. And, and the reason for that is obviously the marketing scheme is covering those points as well. But you'll see that they do it in different ways and you'll learn an awful lot from looking at them. So anyway, this is ground control. And um, um, what we're just going to have a look at here is this is their idea. OK, and what I just want to point out is the background. You know, at the beginning up here, it tells you the background of ground control, who was founded by, when it was founded, what it actually does and so on. OK. Um, then you see the purpose of the particular um, digital marketing campaign, not the purpose of ground control, the purpose of the campaign itself. OK, and you will see here um, the overall aim is to increase the direct bookings made through the website, increase awareness of ground control as a new business and various techniques deemed appropriate with the use to achieve these aims. OK, so the main two two goals are bookings, increased bookings, and increase awareness okay and you can see that how they're doing it up in the, the higher section up here how they intend on achieving that so that's the the background and, and the purpose and this section in here is the rationale why are they doing it why are they why are they creating a digital marketing campaign okay why is it important right now to do so okay so that's a very good example we've got the three sections in there to talk about it very well and so on so once you've come up with your idea, then you enter into the analysis phase. And the analysis phase um, of the process uh, includes three different things, your goals, your audience, and your standing. Now, your goals are fairly straightforward with regards to what, what do you want to achieve from your project, from your digital marketing campaign? What are your main goals, okay? Um, the second part is the audience. Who are your audience? Now, we'll be doing that in the next tutorial after this. And then the next one is your standing. In other words, what have you got right now? Like with regards to, do you have a website? If you have a website, how well is it functioning for you? How good is the search engine optimization? Do you have any other channels? How well are they working or how badly are they working? Okay, so all of those things are important. So we can understand at the end of the analysis phase, we know what we're trying to do. We know who it's for and we'll know where we are right now. OK, now at the end of the analysis phase, we won't know how we're going to get there, because at the end of the day, that's what strategy the next phase is going to do. So we're going to start off the uh, analysis phase by having a look at goals. So the first question is, is, you know, what we're talking about here is your aims and objectives. So what's the difference between an aim and object uh, objective? What is an aim and what is an objective? OK. And what are the main goals of a digital marketing campaign? So when you think about these things, it's very, very important that we look at these and we start thinking about them. So if I just get everyone here to pause the video for a second and, 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 and jot down, what do you think are the main aims of any digital marketing campaign? OK, what's the aim of, of something like Facebook? What's the aim of, of a website? What's the aim of Twitter or or Instagram, what's the aim of these things, okay? And I guarantee all of us will come up with a number of different aims. And, and uh, you know, with regards to your product or service, what are they doing for you? That's the main thing, okay? Um, and you might say, we want to build an audience, right? That's awareness, okay? So that's good. Like, you know, you might say, well, I want to sell something. 
that's excellent okay so you've got e-commerce sales excellent okay um maybe you're talking about promoting your product all right and then maybe sales will happen later or sales will happen to another channel that's great too okay so maybe it's about communication maybe it's about customer service maybe it's about savings because maybe doing it online will be cheaper than doing it you know in traditional channels and so on so all of these things are goals um, they may not all be goals for your particular um, digital marketing campaign, but they're goals. Okay, so we'll have a look at this. And I'm going to have a look at a number of these different ones. So when you look at this, first one is customer retention, retaining the customers that you already have. Now, I'm just going to throw in something from a marketing perspective here. There's a thing called an 80-20 rule, and that's 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. Okay, now, even if that's not exactly true, what we're actually seeing there is that most of our business comes from a small number of customers. So it's probably very, very important for us to retain our customers. And to be quite honest, we all know it's way cheaper for us to retain our customers than it is to gain new customers. OK, and um, so that's customer retention. Then below that, you've got customer acquisition, which is always, a, you know, an important one, trying to get new customers as well. OK, while it's important to keep our, our, our current customers, it's also important for us to keep building or to keep trying to build um, and our demand over time. And brand awareness is another one there. OK, so there that's just one campaign. If I look at another campaign, we see other things. Brand awareness again, customer acquisition again, lead generation, same thing again, loyalty, in other words, Getting our customers to keep coming back to us is really, really important. So not only is it important to retain the customers, but to get them to keep buying from us is really, really important. OK, engagement. So engagement is is extremely important in certain campaigns, because in some cases we're trying. That's all we're trying to do. In other cases, it's it's a part of a process or a step towards another goal. OK, taught leadership. It's a very interesting one. If I said to any of you, can anyone think of a leader, a company that's a leader in the area that they're dealing with? Just think about this, a leader, somebody that people look to see if new products are coming out. And if the new products, they think that they're cutting edge in whatever you're dealing with. When I ask this question normally in class, I get I normally get the one answer and that's Apple. People will come up with Apple as, as being the top leader. Other people would argue, hold on a second, they're the ones that rob ideas from somebody else. It's just they're such a big company. No matter what you think of them, they are up there and they do. People do listen to them and people are are, are waiting for what they have coming out next. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to see what's coming out. OK, sales. Very common one. And nurturing and lead management about nurturing your um, your customers as are. OK, so again, another step on the way to loyalty there. So Again, sales, awareness, all of these things are, you know, talking about generation of demand as well. So these are just different, different campaigns and they have different goals, but all of them focus around the same things that I started talking about when I, when I, when I went into goals originally. And these are some things that you, we should be thinking about when we're thinking about our own goals. So thinking about, right, what are we trying to achieve? OK, so there's a whole load of different ones. Acquisition, um, effectiveness, you know, saving money, making money, all of these things. OK, so, you know, I could keep going on all day with loads of different examples of, of what research has shown as being the main the main um the main goals of a, of a, of, a, of a campaign. Um, you know, there's another one here, this, you know, user experience, brand awareness again, revenue again, increase website traffic. In other words, drive people to our website. All of these very, very important. And again, that's a step on the way to sales because no matter what way we look at it now, all of social media, all of these things are fantastic channels, but quite often businesses are still driving, still driving traffic to the website in order to conduct a sale at the end okay or to their app in order to conduct a sale so when you think about that they're still our main sales channels okay so what's the major difference between traditional marketing goals and digital marketing goals are there any well you know i would argue that there are what's the main ones well 
marketing goals are infinitely more. Anyone got an idea? Quantifiable. But very simply, talking about very, very, very specific goals. Here's some goals that we have from a campaign, okay? So if we look at this conversion rate, now conversion rate are the number of people going to a website versus the number of people buying from the website. And you can see the conversion rate in this particular one is 4.6%, which is actually really high, as it turns out. Quite often in, 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 uh, in tourism, the, the average is 1.8%. So 4.6% is, is massive, but it means that 46 people out of 100 will do what we want them to do. Okay, that's what the conversion rate means. Now, it also means, in this case here, that 95.4% of people won't do what we want them to do. So that's very important to remember as well. It's all about eating into that 95% that aren't doing what we want and trying to get them, convert them to do what we want them to do. Now, what we want them to do quite often is sales, but it could be signing up for something, or it could be um, becoming aware of something, or it could be sharing something or liking or engaging and stuff like that. So all of those things could be, could be goals and we could have all of them, okay? Signups, so we can see SEO framework or offer. So signups, the number of actual people who clicked on a link and did something and signed up, 48%. Sign up to the news, or 48, I should say. Sign up to the newsletter, 10. So these are very, very quantifiable and, and, and quite often quite small. So, um, but as well as that, our goals must also be measurable and timely, okay? So what that means is our goals have to have, you know, they have to be quantifiable if we could possibly do so. And they have to have a time limit on it. So in the next three months, we're going to do something or the next, quite often, digital goals are quite um, short term as well. So we can turn around and say in the next week, we're going to do something or next in the next fortnight or in the next month or in the next three months, we're going to do something and we're going to achieve a certain goal. So we keep those in mind that our, our aims always have to be SMART and we're familiar with the SMART uh, acronym. So SMART stands for specific or simple, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. Okay. So something has to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So when we keep this in mind, it's very important for us to, to think, are our goals these things? And many of them are these things, okay? It's very simple to set a goal that's, that's broad and, and, and woolly, that we don't know whether we've achieved or not. But as well as that, it's, it's absolutely useless to do so. I'm just gonna add another two letters to this, okay? Evaluate and reward. In other words, the smart goes around and round and round. So by the time we get to the end, we measure it and we reward if we are going, if we're going in the right direction. All right. Uh, some people would also say the last two letters should stand for evaluate and restart because sometimes we're going again with the next set of, of aims and so on. But all of these are, are important and something we have to keep in mind. I find that the most common problem when people are setting goals is this. One is they either set too big of a goal, so it feels really intimidating when you set a really big goal. Like you don't even know where to start. Conversely, people set too small goals and then they hit them and then they feel very complacent as to where they're at. Big goals seem insurmountable, seem very distant to us. So the key is you got to break a bigger goal into smaller pieces or steps and you keep breaking it down. So here's a big goal. Here's the monthly goal, here's the weekly goal, here's the daily goal, here's the minute by minute goal. Now I have a question for you. What is your goal? We have to have very clear goals, clear goals, clear results, fuzzy goals, fuzzy results. It can be about your revenue, about your health, about your creativity, but whatever it is, what is your goal? And you need to write that sucker down. It needs to be quantifiable, objective, something that you can measure. And you have to assign a deadline to it. There's lots of theories on this. It doesn't matter who you talk to from Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield. When you know your goal, goal setting, and you write it down using the neuromotor skills that you have, it's almost like magic that it will come true. I think one of the keys to helping you to achieve your goal is to see progress. So when you have a really big goal, you don't know if you're getting anywhere closer. For example, I want to look really good for summer. 
and I need to get a six pack. Now, there are a lot of steps I have to take in order to be able to achieve that goal. But if I say every day I'm going to cut 200 calories, that makes it a lot easier and a lot more manageable for me to take on. One of the best tools that I've discovered is called scaffolding. And the easier way of thinking about scaffolding is the magic stairway. In order for you to get from point A to point B, try breaking the goal down into smaller bite-sized pieces. Here's what I mean. Let's say one of your goals is I want to grow as an artist. Well, that sounds really lofty, amorphous, and it's hard to get your head wrapped around that. When you think about growth, let's break it down. Well, I want to get better with Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and Premiere. Let's say those are the four things that I need as an artist to become better. Now, each one of those things can be broken into smaller goals yet. How do you get better at Adobe Illustrator? Well, some of the things that you might think of are, I need to learn how to use the pen tool really well. I need to know how to build shapes quickly. I need to know how to draw precisely. Maybe I need to learn about gradients and just best practices in terms of navigation and keyboard shortcuts. Now you see the big goal of I'm going to grow as an artist or a designer has been broken down into four pieces and those four pieces can then be broken down into even smaller pieces. Chunking is power. You don't want to overchunk where you're trying to bite the whole darn thing together. You also don't want to underchunk where you make a million pieces of something. If you make enough reason to follow through and you know what you want, but you make the task overwhelming, you'll be overwhelmed. What is chunking? It's taking all that's coming at you and putting it into idealized size groups that your mind can handle. Okay, we cannot end this video by talking about goal setting and working towards achieving your goal if you just walk away and do nothing. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pick out a goal that you've been setting aside, something that you really want to accomplish, and try to apply the principles in which you've learned today. Now you have a clear plan on how to move forward. Okay, so we've seen a few things there. A lot of it was just reiterating what we were talking about earlier on about goals and being smart and 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 specific uh, and measurable and achievable and realistic and timely, all those things. Um, and then Tony Robbins brought in this, this idea of chunking. So, you know, what we're talking about there is, in a lot of cases, we're talking about the difference between an aim and an objective, okay? An aim is what I want to achieve. And an objective is the steps that I would take in order to do that. So smaller goals, if you want to put it that way. So, um, and as well as that, the aim is what, the objective is how. So what I'm going to have a look at here, and I'll have a look at these matrix later on in the course as well. So I'm just going to have a look here, and I'm, I'm actually highlighting some some of the, uh, or sorry, covering some of the bottom parts of this so we won't see them. But... What we've got is the goals are lead generation, credibility, customer communication, all of these kind of things. But further down along, which I've kind of covered over, is the fact that some of these goals can be achieved better through different channels, digital channels. And we'll talk about those later on when we get onto the digital channels and which ones are better at achieving certain goals. Okay, Thought leadership, brand awareness, demand generation, customer loyalty, all of these are aims that you you know, are worth looking at, okay? Awareness, traffic, engagement, conversion, okay? So, time for an exercise I have here, okay? Now, this is, are you gonna see this from time to time in, um, in throughout my tutorials, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is, within the class, I'm actually going to um, issue exercises hopefully in a timely fashion that you'll actually have conducted the exercise prior to the, the class or during the time that you're actually taking this particular um, um, tutorial or looking at this tutorial. So what I'm going to say to you here very simply is if you haven't already done exercise one aims, have a look at it, okay? And really all it is is I want you to get together with a group of people and to, to, to talk about and discuss your aims, to brainstorm. OK, about aims for a particular um, for either a project you're coming up with or a project that I'm actually giving you in the exercise. OK, so if you haven't already done exercise one aims, please pause the video. Do it now, because what we're going to deal with after this is hopefully going to maybe answer some of the questions. OK, so ground control, uh, going back to their example of what their aims were. OK, I'm just going to have a look at actual aims here. OK, track. Um, attraction, conversion, retention, okay? And you can see here that they're very, very specific. Visitor acquisition costs, 
changing by 0.74%, down by 0.74%. Uh, visitor growth, okay? And you can see all of these are very, very specific. Now, unfortunately, these, these are digital aims, but unfortunately, it's very difficult to come up with these actual figures the first time you do it. You'll only start to see this when you do it the second, the third, the fourth time. What's realistic? What's achievable? What's pushing you a little bit more to try and achieve these different things, okay? So here are um, ground controls, aims, and objectives. So for starters, they have three aims, okay? Now, a couple of rules about aims that I'd just like to point out. First of all, keep the number of aims low. All right, you don't want 17 aims, you don't want 25 aims. This is what Tony Robbins was talking about, chunking. What we have here is they have three aims, okay? The first one is to increase bookings made directly through the website to 10% within the first three months of launching the website, okay? That is, um, it's simple. We can understand what it is, okay? It's unambiguous, okay? It's measurable, they can go to 10% in three months. Achievable, I don't know, because it depends on the company as to whether it's achievable or realistic. And is there a time? Yes, there is, okay? Promote brand awareness of the website through the use of social media and online platforms, okay? Now, while that is an aim, it's not a smart aim because it doesn't really have, uh, you know, any measurability or, you know, or timeliness. You know, if I turned around to somebody and said, listen, here's my website and just told them about it, that's promoting it and therefore I've achieved this aim. I'm not talking about one person, I'm talking about growing my audience here. So um, so you've got to look at your aims here. Are they achievable? Are they realistic? You know, are they smart, okay? The same with the objectives. What I would do with objectives here, quite often you see it done in other examples. But what you've got is you put, you see a grid here with aims, and beside that you see objectives, and you see certain ones of these objectives will, will try to achieve one of these aims. And in certain cases, some of these objectives will try to achieve more than one aim. OK, so that's OK, too. You'll also notice here that the objectives will actually mention digital channels. OK, they will actually mention numbers. OK, so 200 likes for engagement or whatever, 100 people connect with 100 people on LinkedIn and so on. So it'll measure it'll mention the channels and um, there's normally and it'll mention specifics. And there's normally more objectives than there are aims. That's normally the way it goes as well. So this is an example of, of, of ground controls, aims and objectives. As I mentioned, there are four other examples out there. You can download them off the website or off Dropbox.